Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest webinar, What are Customs Brokers and Freight Forwarders? I'm Nick Esposito. I'll be your host and presenter today. I wear many hats here at TRG, but one of my favorite roles is that of an educator to both my fellow coworkers and you, my audience of importers, exporters, and other international trade professionals. This webinar is being presented by Trade Risk Guarantee Brokerage Services, LLC, or as we're commonly referred to as TRG. We're located in the heart of downtown Bozeman, Montana, which, as of late, can't decide if it wants to be winter, spring, or summer. On Monday, it went from 66 and Sunday to 32 and snowing within a few hours. As we like to say around these parts, if you don't like the weather, just wait a few minutes. If you're ever in town, don't be shy. Stop on by the second floor of the historic Rocking Iron Bar building. Our direct-to-importer business model is unique to the customs bond and cargo insurance markets. We've grown our business over the last 26 years to encompass over 10,000 clients from all avenues of international trade. As an important disclaimer, the information presented in this webinar is for information purposes only and does not intend and does not constitute legal advice. We will be recording this webinar and it will be available on YouTube for future reference to be notified the moment it releases and to keep a pulse on TRG's educational videos, I highly recommend you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also search for it by typing Trade Risk Guarantee Space YouTube into Google and clicking the first result. If you have any additional questions outside the webinar or if you'd like to be part of a community of trade professionals, join our Facebook group, International Trade Professionals hyphen TRG. We regularly check the group for questions and encourage our members to start conversations amongst themselves if they have a common problem. Today's webinar topics will cover what are customs brokers and three great questions to ask them, what are freight forwarders as well as three great questions to ask them, where can you find customs brokers and freight forwarders, and the differences between customs brokers and freight forwarders. Our first topic today will be what are customs brokers. First, let's take a look at the definition of and requirements to be a customs broker per customs website. Customs brokers are private individuals, partnerships, associations, or corporations licensed, regulated, and empowered by U.S. Customs and Border Protection to assist importers and exporters in meeting federal requirements governing imports and exports. Brokers submit necessary information and appropriate payments to CBP on behalf of their clients and charge them a fee for this service. Brokers must have an expertise in the entry procedures, admissibility requirements, classification, valuation, and the rates of duty and applicable taxes and fees for imported merchandise. Customs states that there's approximately 11,000 active licensed customs brokers. So here's a fun fact. If we approximate the, no the active number of U.S. importers that hold continuous U.S. customs bonds to be between 250,000 to 300,000, we find that there are between 22 to 27 importers for every one customs broker. Pretty cool. So what does this all mean? Licensed customs brokers are required to pass a rigorous government mandated test and background search prior to engaging in customs business on behalf of U.S. importers. At their foundation, all customs brokers must possess an expert understanding of the customs code of federal regulations and display a deep understanding of the harmonized tariff system, as it ultimately provides the determination of the duty rate for each unique commodity. The combination of their expertise in these fields allows them to act as a liaison between the importer and customs. What this translates to for many importers is that the customs broker prepares and delivers the necessary paperwork, collaborates with the importer to determine an appropriate classification, pays duties and fees, and handles other crucial interactions with customs during the process of importing goods. Let's take a moment to discuss an incredibly crucial topic, which is where legal responsibility of the goods lies in the eyes of customs. The importer of record, or IOR, not the customs broker is liable for any mis mistakes made during the process of importation. Additionally, customs absolutely will not accept an omission of understanding. In other words, saying you didn't know doesn't matter to customs. Again, I can't stress this enough. Regardless of who makes the mistakes, the IOR is ultimately held legally responsible for their goods. So what does this mean for you, the importer of record? 
When it comes to classification of your goods, it's in your best interest to have multiple sources involved in the final determination of the classification you plan to use. While we're on the subject, it is also in your best interest not to rely on the foreign manufacturer to classify your goods, or more import importantly, supply your HTS US codes. Importers utilizing a supplier's suggested tariff code may be falsely lured into perceiving lower prices as a result of a lower duty rate. The foreign manufacturer will not be held liable for the misclassification of your goods. Again, as the importer of record, the burden to properly classify the goods rests on your shoulders. What are some of the specific services and paperwork that Customs provides for an importer? Customs brokers will transmit your importer security filing, also known as ISF, declare your right to make entry properly, fill out and file your entry summary 7501, file your cargo release, pay duties and fees on your behalf, and they may even have helped determine your classification. It's important to note that the accuracy of documentation is essential because while customs may inadvertently accept inaccurate paperwork, they will eventually catch on to the inaccuracies, which can result in massive penalties down the road. It is not unheard of for customs to miss a classification mistake for multiple years and seek remedy for a period of up to five years prior, even on entries that have already liquidated. Some of you at this point may be thinking, that sounds great, Nick, but I'm not really sure what any of this means. So let's take a step back and analyze where the customs broker fits in during the process of entry of foreign goods into the U.S. On this chart, we can roughly lump things into two categories. Everything that needs to happen before the goods reach the U.S., everything that happens once the goods arrive in the U.S. Let's discuss what needs to happen before the goods arrive. The first step in the entry process happens even before the goods have left the foreign port. This step is known as the importer security filing, in which you, or for the sake of this webinar, your customs broker is sending customs various data elements about your cargo destined for the U.S. This is essentially a report that details where your goods are coming from, who manufactured and sold them to you, who is in contact with them at origin, and to whom they will be shipped. Basically, a means for customs to pre-screen the goods you import and determine if there will be further inspection upon arrival. This data filing must be completed no later than 24 hours before the goods are placed on the foreign vessel bound for the U.S., so pretty far in advance. If your goods are due to arrive and their final destination is an ocean port, the customs broker can pre-clear your entry at the port of discharge up to five days in advance. If your cargo will be on forwarding or traveling to some inland port, the customs broker must wait for the cargo to reach its destination port prior to making entry. The vast majority of customs brokers today transmit data through a method known as remote location filing, RLF. RLF allows your broker to submit your data entry and pay duties and fees from their living room in Fargo while your cargo is sitting at the port in Memphis. Pretty cool. Let me go into more detail on that. Before your goods arrive in the U.S., the customs broker, on, on behalf of the importer, must also make arrangements at the port of entry, the place where duties and documents will be filed. While this, what this does is signals to customs at which port you'll be interacting with them, so when the goods arrive at the port, the customs officials know what to do with the goods and what to expect. Once your goods have arrived in the U.S., they cannot be cleared by customs until your broker has coordinated the commercial documentation for customs review or immediate release. What are the, custom, what are the commercial documents required, you ask? Your broker will need your commercial invoice, packing list, and bill of lading, and they may additionally request the arrival notice. Submitting these documents to your broker prior, prior to arrival will ensure the timely release of your cargo and help you to avoid any unnecessary storage fees. As long as the customs broker has all the proper documentation, they will generally file for immediate release, which encompasses filing the cargo release, filing the entry summary 7501, and paying estimated duties. Here's a quick breakdown of each of these. Filing the cargo release. This releases the goods from customs custody and declares that the importer has the right to make entry into the U.S. File entry summary, also known as the customs form 7501. Customs brokers file this document by collating the data from your commercial invoice, packing list, and bill of lading. They gather and collect data that informs the classification of your goods, the origin of the goods, the value and quantity of the goods. Pay estimated duties. As you can imagine, this is a crucial step in which the customs broker pays duties and fees assessed on the tariff and value of the commercial invoice on your behalf based
based on the information contained in the 7501. For more details on the entry process, check out our previous webinar, The Process of Liquidation and Entering Goods into the United States. As you may have gathered at this point, the customs broker plays a massive and crucial role in the process of importation that directly affects your supply chain, which means finding the right one is also a crucial task. To that end, I've compiled three of my favorite questions to kickstart the vetting process of finding a good customs broker. Question number one. Mr. Customs Broker, how will you help my company ensure proper compliance with customs regulations? One of my favorites. Basically, you want to make sure that they have a finger on the pulse of customs. How are they monitoring new compliance protocols being released by customs? Are they part of any key trade compliance organizations? For example, ICPA, which is International Compliance Professionals, or the NCB FAA, National Customs Brokers and Forwarders Association of America? Question number two, Mr. Customs Broker, do you have any pending lawsuits or violations and or have you been sanctioned by customs? As you can imagine, you probably wouldn't want to work with a customs broker who has pending lawsuits or violations. Additionally, if they've been sanctioned by customs, that means they have to make cash deposits to customs, effectively eliminating payment by other means and severely eliminating their capabilities. As you can imagine, being sanctioned by customs is not a good thing. Question number three. Mr. Customs Broker, how much do your services cost? It's important to know how much your customs broker is going to charge you, and asking for a breakdown of fees is a great way to compare customs brokers. Here's a few things to, to ask about to get you started. You can ask about ISF filing, entry filing, warehouse entry, partner government agency, or PGA, entry filing, or even for a customs bond. Now, many of you may already be aware, but the customs bond can be sourced directly from an insurance, insurance agency, just like TRG. Customs bonds aside, there's a roughly 11,000 customs brokers out there, so don't feel like you're stuck with one. By all means, do a cost comparison between your favorite options. Now that you have an understanding of customs brokers, let's dig into freight forwarders. As you can imagine, freight forwarders could very easily be a webinar of its own, so I've tried to keep it pretty simple today, with the idea that we'll have future in-depth webinars that dig into the complexity of specific freight forwarder topics. To start, freight forwarders can be defined as a firm specializing in arranging storage and shipping of merchandise on behalf of its shippers. It usually provides a full range of services including tracking inland transportation, preparation of shipping and export documents, warehousing, booking cargo space, negotiating freight charges, freight consolidation, cargo insurance, and filing of insurance claims. Freight forwarders usually ship under their own bills of lading or air way bills, called house bill of lading or house air way bills. And their agents or associates, associates at the destination, overseas freight forwarders, provide document delivery, deconsolidation, and freight collection services. As witnessed in the previous definition, the term freight forwarders can conceivably cover a wide range of professionals and services, and their role depends on the need of your company. The advantage of working with a freight forwarder is that they can act as an extension of your business. Their level of involvement in your organization's supply chain can vary depending on how you engage them. At their root, forwarders are logistics professionals with a deep knowledge of moving freight from one location to another and managing the transportation to avoid or minimize freight holds, demurrage, and attention for their clients. Forwarders working on behalf of importers will coordinate and provide necessary documents to the customs broker, such as the bill of lading and arrival notice. Unlike the customs broker, who has expertise in customs regulation, classification, customs required forms, and clearing customs, the freight forwarder advocates for the timely pickup and delivery of her customers' shipments by coordinating with a vast network of transportation and compliance professionals. The most classic example of freight forwarders are UPS, FedEx, DHL, etc. Makes sense, right? They pick up the freight at one location, they utilize their shipping network to determine the movement of the goods, and finally, freight winds up in a different location at its destination. So we've got a basic idea of the breadth of service freight forwarders cover. Let's to set, discuss some of the common terms associated with freight forwarders that we frequently get questions on. First, let's discuss freight consolidation and deconsolidation. 
Freight consolidation is the means by which multiple smaller shipments from different importers are grouped together to create a larger, fuller shipment, usually utilized as a cost-saving technique in addition to time-saving by frequency of travel in specific trade lines. Deconsolidation occurs after the goods have arrived at the shared destination. The goods must then, then be separated back out into their smaller shipments to be further dispersed to warehouse or final destination. Next, we have FCL LCL, which stands for full container load and less than container load. Full container load means that all the cargo in a single shipping container is all your cargo. Less than container load shipments are those of lesser volume and can be consolidated at an origin point with many CDs goods at all sharing cargo space. It's like buying a seat on kayak.com, but in an ocean container. Followed by FTL LTL. Similar to FCL LCL, FTL stands for full truckload, while LTL stands for less than truckload. You've probably noticed that instead of a container, the goods in this sense are being moved via truckload instead of by a container. Additionally, another difference is that in some cases, less than truckload may simply mean that you require a smaller specialized vehicle to move your goods. It doesn't necessarily mean your goods have been consolidated with another's as compared to container shipping. Moving on, let's discuss a few more items you've probably heard flung around. First, ocean carrier, which generally refers to the shipping lanes that operate the cargo ships that are physically moving the goods from one country to another. Some of the big wigs in the game are Maersk, Hapik Lloyd, CMA, CGM Group. Next, we have NVOCC, which stands for Non-Vessel Operating Common Carrier. Again, this is an element that could very easily be an upcoming webinar topic all of its own. But for now, let's stick to a simple definition. NVOCCs are similar to carriers, however, they don't own the cargo ships. Instead, they've purchased slots on the cargo ships from the shipping line that they in turn turn around and sell to freight agents, freight forwarders, or otherwise. So what are three great questions for a freight forwarder? Question number one, do they offer the services you require? First, determine what services you may need and then find out if that freight forwarder offers them. In many cases, this can be resolved by checking out their website. However, it never hurts to ask and reassure, and reassure that what you're looking for is what they offer. Not only will you be able to discern what services they offer from the website, you'll probably also be able to get a pulse from their customers' reviews or testimonials how their service compares to their competitors. Question number two, how will they manage your shipments? How will you interact with them? In general, you want to get a feel for how they handle their customer service. Is it more than one person? Who will be your points of contact should an issue arise? Are they, are they easily available in the event of an emergency? Remember, these are your goods at risk, so you want to ensure that, you sh that should an issue arise during their contracted segment, that they'll be available to support you. Question number three, how much experience do they have? Perhaps my favorite question to ask, which really gets to the heart of the matter. How much experience do you have as a freight forwarder or freight agent? Have you been doing this for years, months, days? Are they a reputable freight forwarder? Again, you can always start with a basic Google search and get a wealth of information, including reviews from customers. As you may have guessed, you can find freight forwarders and customs brokers in almost the identical locations. The easiest solution, which also offers the best chance at finding reviews, is to do a basic Google search for a customs broker or freight forwarder. Also, while surfing the net, you can stop by Customs' website, cbp.gov, and look for their interactive map, an interactive map in which you can source Customs Brokers per port. However, if you prefer the old-school brick-and-mortar route, you can find Customs Brokers and for freight forwarders in every state and typically concentrated, concentrated around ports, especially the larger ports. Finally, don't forget that our sister company, Strix, is a customs brokerage and freight forwarder that specializes in self-filing software, as well as domestic and international freight services. You're welcome to reach out to us after the webinar, and we can put you in touch with them if you, if you want to find out if they're a fit for your company. So if you've made it this far, you hopefully have a better understanding of customs brokers and freight forwarders. But in case you're still wondering, what is the difference between customers, customs brokers and freight forwarders? Well, customs brokers' expertise is in the language of customs and making sure that all customs required paperwork is filed accurately with customs, while freight forwarders are the logistics professionals who are in charge of maneuvering your goods from ports and places to the world to other ports and places in the world. 
As a final note, due to the complementary nature as well as need for cohesion between the two, we often see that many customs brokers also take on the role of freight forwarder and vice versa. And that's it. At this time, we'd like you to please submit your questions. We'll try to answer them now uh, in a little bit. But first, we want to tell you a little more about TRG. While we collect questions from the audience, I'd like to tell you about TRG. TRG is an international trade insurance agency. We work directly with importers and exporters. We've been doing this for 26 years. We've got over 13,000 clients that we work with every day, specifically discussing these complex topic, topics and helping them navigate through this world of customs. We're an additional resource for them and their customs broker and freight forwarder. So our model does help save time and money, and our multi-year billing cycles are significantly less, usually on the customs bond. Typically, people are paying somewhere between $475 and $525 for their customs bond, and we're down to $225 a year with our multi-year pricing on the $50,000 bond. You can continue to work with any broker or forwarder of your choice, and if any issues arise, our in-house claims assistance from our licensed customs brokers are available to help you. All right, let's answer a few of those questions. First question from Gary. Should an importer be concerned about their broker if that broker asks few, if any, questions about what they're clearing for the importer? I'd say that really depends on what kind of goods you're bringing in and how frequently. If you're bringing in a fairly simple commodity a couple of times a year, you'll likely receive fewer questions than someone who's bringing in significantly more complex commodities at a higher frequency. So to answer your question, no, not necessarily. However, it never hurts to shop the market. If you feel like your customs broker isn't adequate, don't feel caged in. Check out the competition. Penny asked, what is the best way to compare costs between customs brokers? First, I would start by collecting as much information about the cost for each of their services, including specific fees that could be related to your business. Some brokers will, will break out this pricing on their website. After that, I would, I, you know, more extensive questioning, especially if you've narrowed it down to three customs brokers and kind of get that in person if you can or by the phone, whichever works. Sandy asked, do customs brokers review all of their entries? Sandy, I'd say that Customs brokers who are worth their salt are like re reviewing their entries. If you feel like your customs broker isn't on par, it never hurts to get a second opinion from another customs broker. Thank you for attending the webinar. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly by my email at nick.esposito, which is E-S-P-O-S-I-T-O, at traderiskguarantee.com, or you can reach out to us via our Facebook group, International Trade Professionals, hyphen TRG. The added advantage of reaching out to the Facebook group is you'll access not only our experts on staff, but also experts in the national trade community. Additionally, check out our blog, www.traderiskguarantee.com slash TRG Peak. It's got a treasure trove of excellent articles and information. Don't forget you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and most importantly on YouTube. If you'd like to be notified when we release the recording of this webinar and all of our awesome videos as soon as they come out, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, thank you for attending the webinar.